Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another video lecture on discrete mathematics. Dear viewers, now you know what are sets and how to represent different kinds of sets. But that is just tip of an iceberg. There are lots of topics to cover in sets. For example, what are null sets? What are singleton sets? What is a universal set? What is cardinality of a set? What are finite and infinite sets? What are countable and uncountable sets? What are countable infinite and uncountable infinite sets? What is a subset? What is a proper subset? Let us know answer to these questions in this video. I am Muhammad Iqbal Bhatt. Let us start. First, empty or null set. A set that contains no element is called an empty set or the null set and is denoted by or. For example, the set S of all positive integers that are greater than their square is a null set. There is no positive integer which is greater than its square, hence no other item belongs to this set. Hence is a null or empty set and we can write it as. Second, singleton set. A set with single item is called a singleton set. For example, the set of prime numbers less than 2. So we know that there is only a single prime number less than 2, that is 1. Hence, it is a singleton set and can be represented as. Third, universal set. A universal set denoted by U contains all the elements under consideration. The universal set varies depending upon which objects are of interest. For example, if we have student set under consideration then universal set represents all possible students similarly if numbers are under consideration then universal set u represents all possible numbers fourth cardinality of a set the number of elements in a set is called its cardinality and is denoted by two vertical bars for example, let A equal to B a set of some prime numbers, then its cardinality is 5 and is written as, let us now cover some types of sets. The first type is finite set. As the name suggests, a finite set is a set that has finite number of members that can be counted. More formally, a set S is finite if it has same cardinality as some natural number N. In capital N, the set capital N represents the set of natural numbers. We can define cardinality of set S equal to N and say that S has N elements. Examples are finite set A equal to or finite set C equal to X such that X is an integer and X is greater than 1 less than 50. So these two sets have finite number of elements. Next category is infinite sets. An infinite set is a set which is not finite and has infinite number of elements. It is not possible to explicitly list out all the elements of an infinite set. For example, let us take the set T equal to X such that X is a triangle. Can you count the number of triangles that you can form? You cannot imagine how many triangles can be formed. There are infinite number of triangles that can be formed. So this is an infinite set. Another example is N 
the set of natural numbers. Can you tell me how many natural numbers are there? So it is an infinite set. Same is the case with set A equal to set of fractions. Can you tell me how many fractions exist? So this is also an infinite set. Next category is countable set. A set which is finite is a countable set. So we define a countable set as a set S is countable if cardinality of set S is equal to some natural number n. Means if there is a one to one mapping of natural numbers onto the cardinality of the set S. So we say a set is countable if the cardinality of that set can be mapped to some natural number. A finite set like the set of English alphabets is always countable, but a, an infinite set may or may not be countable. For example, the set of all integers is countably infinite. We can count it, but it is infinite. So we say that it is countably infinite. It is having an infinite number of elements, but the cardinality is always some natural number. Next category is uncountable sets. In mathematics, an uncountable set is an infinite set that contains too many elements to be countable. The uncountability of a set is closely related to its cardinal number. That is the number of elements in the set. A set is uncountable if its cardinal number is larger than that of the natural numbers. For example, the set of rational numbers or the set of real numbers, they are uncountable infinite. So remember, uncountable sets are always infinite, but countable sets can be finite or infinite. Now it is time to move to the topic of subsets and proper subsets. What is a subset? If every element in a set A is also an element of some set B, then A is called a subset of B and is mathematically denoted by. We can also say that A is contained in B or that B contains A. What is then proper subset? If there is at least one element in B that is not in A, then we say that A is a proper subset of B and is mathematically denoted by. Let us understand this with the help of an example. Consider two containers containing some numbers. The B container on right hand side contains six numbers. One, three, four, five, eight, and nine. And the A container on left hand side contains numbers one, three, four, and eight. Since every number that is present in container A is also present in container B, and there is not a single element present in container A that is not present in container B, then we can say that contents of container A are contained in container B. And in mathematical terminology, we say that A is a subset of B and is written as the set B contains one number, that is 5, which is not present in set A. And we say that A is a proper subset of B, meaning there is at least one element in B that is not present in set A. If we add this missing number back to set A, then these two sets will become equal. In other words, we can say that A is a proper subset of B if the two sets are not equal. Note down these important properties related to sets and subsets. First, every set A is a subset of the universal set U. 
This is trivial since universal set contains all the elements under consideration. Second, an empty set or a null set is a subset of every set and is written as third every set a is a subset of itself this too is also a trivial property fourth if a is a subset of b and b is a subset of a then a is equal to b this means every element that is a in a is also in b and every element that is in set B is also in set A. So this means these two sets are containing equal elements. Hence are equal. Fifth, if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of some other set C, then we can say that A is a subset of set C. So these are some important properties related to sets. Now one difficult question. What is this? Mm, it is phi null set or an empty set. And what is this? It is also a null set or an empty set. If I combine above two notations, then tell me what is this? Mm, it looks like a null set or two null sets. No. It is not a null set. Let us understand it with the help of a practical example. I have two windows open on my desktop. On the left hand side, let us create a folder and call it A. We can take an analogy that a folder is equivalent to a set since a set contains different objects or elements inside it and a folder also contains different kinds of files or folders inside it. So we can treat it as a set. So let us call it a set A. So inside this set A, there is nothing. So we can say that A is an empty or null set. Now move to the right hand side and let us create another folder, call it B. So we can treat this folder B as set B. Now let us call it set B. And now inside this set B, there is nothing. So this too is an empty folder or empty set. So we can say that set A is equal to set B because both the sets are null sets. Now inside this B set, let us create another set and call it X. And this X is itself a set, but inside this set there is nothing. So we can say that X is a null set. Now let us move back to B. Now tell me, what is B? B is a set containing a single item X as its element, but that X is an empty or null set. So, in mathematical notation, we can represent B with this notation and we can represent set A with this null set representation. So, this is difference between a null set and a set containing a single element as it is member which itself is a null set. Hope you understand this example. Now you know phi or two curly braces is a null set, but this is a set containing a null set as its element. Thanks for watching this video. See you soon in some other video lecture.